Welcome to Beyond Humanity, brought to you by HiveOne.net. With us today is Matt Reddy, host of the Mindful Activist webcast, published author of Revolutionary Mindfulness, and a hospital commissioner in Jefferson County, Washington. He's an amateur ufologist, creator of HiveOne.net, and a philosopher. I'm Margaret Howe, product manager of New Perspective LLC. In the Beyond Humanity podcast, we explore the possibilities and implications of artificial intelligence and alien life for human evolution, identity, and destiny. In later episodes, we'll have some time for the audience to speak to those who might have questions or have something related to talk about. We're hoping that some folks will join us in the Twitter space today. We'll see. We want to invite anyone on Earth, human, alien, reptilian, AI, interdimensional beings, and Met fans. We are sponsored by the Sisterhood of the Fork Tongue Worm. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let me get into Twitter and uh, retweet that you're doing this. That would be good. Sure. So, and um, how should we handle people coming into the Twitter space? I I said it so they don't even have to request a microphone. If anyone walks in, it's like they're walking into the recording studio. Oh, cool. Um, so they could just start talking. So I hope you're okay with that. It might, who knows, it become chaos if some crazy people come in or interrupting people. But, you know, chaos can be fun. <clears throat> Should I play some? And I realized I didn't know how to turn down the background music so that your voice uh, wasn't drowned out. By, so I don't know how that worked. Um, Guys, no worries. Don't worry yeah. about it. Yeah. I'll, I'm going to stop my share because I'm not going to any more music. Okay. Uh, although I guess I do need to share if I want to play La Certa transcript. My gosh, I was. Yeah, you should play some more of that until someone else joins. It's so good. Well, or do, unless we want to jump into topics, but this is, uh, why don't I do that? Because that was not part of, that was part of the pre-show. Oh, I'm going to okay. play a clip from the Lacerta transcript that relates to why do alien spacecraft crash? Um, and this is what Lacerta says in her famous transcript that is famous in the UFO community, at least, I think. Um Let's see, what part of this? I'll just play it. This is like, the question was, here, I'll just play it and see. Question, okay. good. Let's talk about UFOs. Can you explain to me how our governments came into possession of UFO material to the point that they could start their own projects? Did it have- Oops, I forgot that I don't have the microphone playing. All right. Well, let's see. I see you just noticed there's another Twitter space going that's similar, trans-dimensional transition. Yeah. Good, like, uh, we could just go listen to that. But it, it doesn't, you never know what they're going to be talking about there. <laughs> I think we just keep going. I think we, we focus. Okay. On. Um, so I realize this answer from Lacerda is pretty long. I don't, I don't know which part to play it. Hmm. What do you think? What should we, uh, how should we structure today's conversation? Well, um, what have you been doing this morning? Have you just been listening in on, <laughs> have, have you been checking the Twitter spaces this morning? I haven't been following very closely, although I did see uh, someone posting about a spherical, uh, uh, they had a video of a sphere. Mm. Uh, uh, that's that's about all I saw today. Yeah, no, I've been scouring, uh, you know, the, what the news networks and what clips are getting up on YouTube from news coverage of this and processing the data that's come out of the Grush interview. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I can just share you sort of my train of thought of the mystery my brain is trying to analyze at the moment about this whole thing. Okay. Uh, it goes back to that crash retrieval story that they keep saying. It does not sound at all convincing to me that super advanced alien spacecraft crash. It also seems inconsistent that they clearly are saying many of these spacecraft are fully intact and fully working. So they, I don't think they really crashed. It's, it also seems really inconsistent that they're saying these 
they have fully intact working craft, but the only thing they've ever that, that Grush mentioned was dead bodies, not live bodies. Anyways, it seems more plausible that this is an exchange program, you know, of uh, alien technology to the U.S. based on some sort of agreement or to people, some human groups for some sort of agreement that are entrenched within the U.S. military industrial complex. Uh, but another weird detail came up because I watched the angry astronaut yesterday. Mm. Uh, do you know who the angry astronaut is? I have seen the angry astronaut. Yes. Yeah. So I, I didn't see it yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So he covers uh, the space, um, you know, science and everything. And uh, he's never talked about UFOs and aliens, but this forced him, he says, to, to go public and to address it. Um, and it sounds like he's been researching it for two years. But he shared his theory, his hypothesis of how these craft move. And he says it doesn't violate our laws of physics because they use magnetism. And mm. I've never heard this theory. Well, actually, that's not true. See, because I think these are anti-gravity ships, because that goes back to what Bob Lazar said about Element 115 and how they work. And it really fits with their behavior, in my mind, that they're using anti-gravity, one, because they can lock in space into position perfectly and a magnetic drive you would be i think you'd be more i mean have you ever seen a magnet float on something anyways i don't believe it, the magnetism it, it hover yeah something a magnet floating on something doesn't hold very still yeah. yeah but when he said i think these are magnetic drives and he was convinced of that and that they were not anti-gravity drives or things using physics we don't understand i realized that will give a lot of the scientific community and military community relief if they think it's a magnetic uh, technology they're using, because he said we're close to creating that. Um, he said they use the Earth's magnetic field. If you have a, if, if you have superconductors that are twenty percent mm -hmm. more efficient than what we have now, he says you can just use magnetism to fly all over Earth, which might be true, and maybe there are magnetic drives. But this is the the red flag or alert flag that went off in my brain mm -hmm. as he was talking about that is I realized I did hear about this one time before of magnetic drives in these alien craft. And that was from the Lacerta transcript. Uh, the Lacerta transcript is a, uh, a long interview that is supposedly with a reptilian alien woman that has been floating around the internet for years. Apparently this interview, I think, um, uh, it took place in the 90s, I think. And it is filled with information that, you know, most of the world has written off as absolute creative fiction. But if aliens are real, then one of these creative fictions that have been floating around the world might be absolutely true. Um, so in her transcript, uh, she talks about the magnetic... Uh, the way these things use magnetism, and it actually is an explanation mm -hmm. for why they crash. She says, and maybe I could just uh, quote it to you. Mm -hmm. So she's asked, um, good, let's talk about UFOs. Can you explain to me how our governments came into possession of UFO material to the point that they could start their own projects? Did it have anything to do with the Roswell incident? And Lacerta answers, yes, but that incident was not the first one. She says she's just a historian. She doesn't know all the details. But in the years 1946 to 53, there were five cases where extraterrestrial ships crashed to the surface of the Earth. Hmm. In that, so that is... What was the start date on that? From 1946 to 53. 46. Okay. She says okay. five incidents where they crashed to Earth. Uh, the Roswell incident, there was not only one alien ship involved but two that crashed mm -hmm. after a collision in different parts of the land in the West. Um, and so again, so that why would alien crafts crash? And she gets to that. She says, but this was not the first crash. Oh, okay. She says one thing first before the explanation, it certainly sounds ridiculous to you that such highly developed extraterrestrial ships simply crash and that a relatively large number did so in a relatively short amount of time. The explanation for that is likewise more than strange, but it is correct. It does not lie in the ship's drive itself, but rather in the direction of the field to your planet. 
this species that we are discussing, and it is always in this time period that this species used a disc-shaped craft. I, I suppose she's talking about a different species in herself. Anyways, mm -hmm. used a propulsion system, which ran according to the normal principle of fusion, to be sure, but one that at that time employed a more than unconventional method for field alignment. This method had various advantages, but also disadvantages. The repelling field must, of course, lie in the absolute correct angle to the surface of the Earth. This species used an alignment technology in their ships with which the field locked into place all points of the Earth's magnetic field. Now, at that time, blah, blah, blah. So and it says, at that time, the species had just arrived on the Earth, and their point of origin lay on a planet with a more stable magnetic field mm -hmm. for which they had developed and aligned their drive. The magnetic field of the Earth is not really all that stable. It is subject to cyclical variations, and it forms field eddies under unfavorable conditions. Whenever a ship with one of those kinds of drives gets into a field fluctuation or into an eddy that is too strong, then for a short time, the repelling field can no longer align itself correctly and the ship glides uncontrolled on its flight path. <laughs> the drive is operating correctly to be sure, but the field fluctuates in all directions. And because of that, the ship can crash. Uh, so blah, blah, blah. That is Lacerta's explanation of why super advanced alien spacecraft are crashing like crazy all over Earth. Mm -hmm. These aliens have developed super flying technology, but for some reason can't figure out how to maybe just use GPS or something to move around the Earth. They, they decide to use the Earth's magnetic field, and even after they discover it fluctuates, they continue to use it as mm -hmm. their navigation thing, despite crashing like crazy. So they're pretty dumb, I would say. I would be interested to know if that time period, um, if, if on the day of the Roswell crash, if there was actually atomic experiments happening in the Pacific, um, both the US and Russia were doing experiments during the late 40s to 50s. Um, and a nuke going off definitely would have an impact on the magnetic field of the earth. Yeah. Um, and, you know, depending on where, where it is, right. And how, how strong it is, but you know, they, they did high altitude, um, tests. They did underground tests. Right. Um, <laughs> so that could be something the aliens didn't expect or didn't, you know, couldn't figure out how to compensate for. Um, yeah, since it, was, and, it was new to humanity, right? Yeah. And you know what? This reminds me of something Grush said because mm -hmm. he was asked, he said something about there are techniques for bringing down these craft. Mm -hmm. And maybe that is, maybe that's building up to their, them get, saying a story that somehow they can manipulate a magnetic field in a certain area that forces the craft to land. And maybe that's, I mean, I mean, that's a plausible explanation how you'd get a fully working craft. If you can basically disable it, then maybe the aliens will abandon it and you got a fully working craft. I mean, they, they need well, some. Plausible yeah, an stuff. electromagnetic pulse would probably do that, right? It, yeah. it can take a plane down, so. <laughs> yeah. But still, that would be an act of war. I mean, mm -hmm. I guess if it's in your space, but if you, if you bring a craft down, you're, you're committing a violent act against someone. So I, I don't find that believable. Um, also, I just want to say about what Lacerta said in that transcript, a lot of people who have analyzed that, and I've, I've analyzed it a lot, and I have a huge document where I had chat GPT help me go through it, and, and we can talk about uh, going to a deep dive into it. But one of the things I believe you have to think about with the Lacerta transcript is, I think it may be completely an accurate transcript. I, I think it might be tr uh, valid, but I think Lacerta may have been lying a lot, just mm -hmm. like the U.S., I think, is lying a lot right now about the exact details. The, the two weird things, besides, you know, Lacerta's explanation, she gives a plausible explanation of how the U.S. could be in possession of a good handful of spacecraft in that story, which mm -hmm. gives a plausible explanation you know, for, you know, and that's important if the explanation is really just 
humans are trading something to aliens for something and they're not sharing it with all of Earth because that's probably the reality. So they are trying not to have everyone on Earth realize this is an elite group of humans getting alien technology, benefiting themselves, putting it into companies they control. And it's just a business transaction that's been hidden from everyone else in humanity. They don't want that story to come out too fast because I think that is the story. Mm -hmm. But the other crazy thing you have to look at with Lacerda transcript is she claims it was a totally different alien species that was crashing all these ships. It's like, mm -hmm. if you read the transcript, she is very prideful of her species and it really emphasizes that they're smarter than humans. And I think they'd just be embarrassed to say they crash their ships all the time. She's like, yeah, we, we just crash them all the time because we never <laughs> figured out how to stop using the magnetic field. She's like, oh, this other alien species, it just, you know, it just crashes, you know, because they don't know what they're doing. And, and so if you go with Occam's razor, you just sort of assume it's more like it, yeah. there may be one alien species here with us, but you don't, don't rush to like add another into the theory. Lacerda could have been just lying about her own species and her because she didn't want to reveal the relationship between her species and the government's her species and their lack of ability to fly their own ships or their transactions with humans. All right. So those are. Um, one thing I did see that I was curious to know if you knew anything about was uh, Grush said something yesterday. Well, it, he said it already, but it was released yesterday. Um, he said something about in 1933, the Italians recovering a craft. Yep. Um, it, have you seen other stuff before he brought it up or? Um, I, no, I, I have to say I have not. I, I'm not actually an expert in the history of these stories of crash mm -hmm. and land because I've, I've ignored them because I've been waiting for some sort of like, I need, I need like a real credible story because right. once I have the threads, then I'll start like digging into them. So I have not researched that or two. So I'm not real familiar with all those stories. Well, in that particular one, um, you know, the Nazis were involved in it and they kept extensive records. So you would think that there would have to be <laughs> so, some kind of, you know, record on that, right? Mm. Um, oh, oh, I just searched it and it says that the Nazis didn't get a hold of it until 1944. So the Mussolini government had it for 11 years. Yeah, um, I, I think I did read that. I mean, it's got to so, be true. It, it's, if the U.S., what, I mean, if their silly story about all these crashes is true, then they have to be crashing all over Earth. That means there has to be global crash retrieval coordination between governments. If, they, if that story is true, I don't believe it's true. I think probably, you know, there is some, some governments or, or some groups of humans in different countries are part of the insiders getting alien technology and some are not. And that probably really upsets some countries that are not getting that are not on the inside and i think there's gonna be a lot of angry once everyone on earth starts to a lot of anger once people yeah. realize this has been going on well yeah i'm angry i i'm so frustrated that it just feels like we keep getting put off and put off and i, I did hear a little uh clip um george knapp was interviewing a guy way back in the 80s and he was talking about reagan um kept bringing up the fact that uh, russia would be happy to unite with us if we had an external threat if there were aliens <laughs> russia would be happy to unite with us right um yeah. and how odd it was to to be going there right mm -hmm. and how that just seemed to like uh, you know, did Reagan know something, right? Like, uh, and and how ultimately did Reagan get Gorbachev um, on his side, right? Like, it was such an odd friendship and such a sudden friendship, right? Um, yeah. It, so you just wonder, like, historically, like, looking at little things that have been said, right? Like, how... How much how much are they allowed to say right how much how, how much has been known by these government officials and they've held back and just towed the line right yeah. 
uh, and, and, you know, so kudos to uh, David Grish for stepping up, right? Um, but we need other people to step up right now and start confirming, right? Other people need to be taking steps. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, you know, he really had to be very careful about how he did this. He made sure he pretty much sent a letter to the Department of Defense, told him everything he's going to say because he didn't want to get in trouble. And he has like one of the best lawyers on earth who is a former inspector general himself. So, you know, they've been sitting there thinking, OK, how can we do every possible thing correctly so that he is we're not putting Roosh in legal trouble and mm -hmm. we're creating a template for now the next person can just do this. They will see how the media and the world reacts to Grouch, see if it destroys his life or if he becomes a hero. I mean, mm -hmm. if Grouch becomes a uh, hero, then that is going to make other whistleblowers be like, oh, this looks like a not a horrible path to go through and share. Although you also have to be willing to pretty much let it dominate your life now. <laughs> his life is never going to be the same. He's right. going to be yeah, but, I, I was surprised that the DOD came out and said, yes, we authorized him, that he could talk about things, uh, but we will not, you know, attest to whether or not he's being truthful. <laughs> right? Like, what? It, it seems like such a backhanded approval. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, I mean, they can't, That they're just letting, they're letting him talk, so... <laughs> Other people, I think, are going to start. And, and oh, that was the other. I saw um, Nick Pope, who, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's been in the ufology community for a long time, but he's a former British government official. So there's mm -hmm. a, some suspicion if he is completely an independent mind. But he seems like a nice guy. I've seen him talk. He just seems anyways, besides whether or not uh he was saying he knows for a fact within the next two weeks, a whole bunch more is going to happen that this is not. And it, he said something about that on a show. And it just seemed like there's a lot of coordinated people. And I guess, I think it's kind of like the whistleblowers are all communicating with people that are really trying to help them, you know, with this NDAA and everything. They're trying to make a safe plan and way for these people to start coming forward. And it sounds like they, they pick the, the right guy to be first, you know, they, and it seems like he was almost set up, you know, it was almost mm -hmm. he said in his interview that he was given this job to inspect this. And then, and then he was starting to give this information. He's like, are you lying? He just assumed everyone was lying to him and making this stuff <laughs> up. And then he said colleagues that he has known for years started coming to him and telling him this. And so can you imagine being in the office and it's like, Hey, uh, you investigate UFOs. Okay, fine. And then everyone that you've known in the office comes in and say, guess what? They are real. <laughs> Touch tag. You're it. <laughs> you are now. We're trusting you to tell the truth and go ahead. Be the spokesperson for the intelligence community. Uh, I mean, it, it, they must have, they almost like handpicked him. They were like, we need the most beyond reproach military strong intelligence member to to that knows nothing because he needs to be authentic he can't mm -hmm. know anything for real it has to be as he uncovers stuff let him whistle blow and speak and that's yeah. what he's doing i mean and he's an intelligence guy he has to almost also know this he has to be sitting there like okay i guess i've got the short straw none <laughs> of you want to be the uh first or <laughs> and He's a soldier, so he's like, I'll do it. What? If this is what I have to do? He's taken orders his whole career. He's going to stand up and be the whistleblower and to, and basically stand next to Lou Elizondo, who's you know also been basically doing the same thing, saying, I will go out there, put my reputation on the line for, what, five, six? How long? How many years has Lou Elizondo been out here just Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Well, that's kind of this. Why are we believing this guy? I mean, we've had we've had other. I mean, the U.S. Army released stuff, or the U.S. Navy, U.S. Navy released stuff. Like, why is it suddenly uh, suddenly more believable, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just weird when someone actually says the U.S. is in possession of craft and they've had dead bodies. That's a big statement. It's one thing to say. Oh, you know, so much. Is, yeah. 
So much is new. <laughs> Elizondo was he always said, I believe that you you know they're in possession of exotic materials, but that could have been literally like you know a loaf of bread sized thing. Mm -hmm. That's different than um they're in they have many alien crafts. That's Bob Lazar level X Files level sci fi. That's a different story. Lou Elizondo never went that far. Um, yeah. And I, I gotta mention a strange thing that happened as I'm like scanning the news mm -hmm. for this stuff. I, maybe I could, I, I won't play the report, but I don't remember, uh, if it was on Fox news or a local station, I think it was a local station, uh, but I don't know what it was affiliated with, but okay. Uh, it was a news report from yesterday mm -hmm. that they said, a family said a they called 911 because they they said an, a, something had crashed in their backyard and two aliens got out what? and they they, <laughs> um, not, they played the the 911 call where the guy is on the phone saying there are two 9 foot tall creatures in my backyard staring at us something crashed i know this sounds ridiculous but i'm, I'm just saying <laughs> I, and so they were showing the body cam footage of the cops that got there and they and you heard the cops saying i am nervous what the heck am i walking into they were like and they got out and they and then they show the body cams and they start to get to the backyard and they turn off the body cam and they don't show us what they see they, the news report did not show us what they showed in the backyard and it's very frustrating and, and they didn't even it's not like these people who claim there were aliens in their backyard i don't if they got video they didn't show it on the newscast but the cops were acting very, they said something crashed back there. Like, and they actually, the cops had a body cam footage seeing a blue crazy shooting star coming and sort of crashing towards that area. Like we, they did a video of that. It's a very weird, weird incident to come for three days after one of the gr weirdest disclosure stories in history. It, I mean, it was just like one of those bizarre tabloid things, but they're claiming and they, I don't know what to make of it. So just park that there. I mean, I, I guess it's and it's not that's the second weird, weird news story that I came across in the last three days. The other one is even more bizarre, but it was from Fox News. So it's like I, I, I'm more suspicious. I don't know if I mentioned this one to you. Uh, and I don't know if I should even be talking about these without playing the clips because I sound ridiculous but um well we can we can link the article i just found an article on it um we can link the article when we do our description okay you podcast. found the article about the incident mm -hmm. i'm mentioning is it where yeah. was it was it las vegas or something? las vegas and it was april 30th of this year okay so this happened yeah. april 30th so that wasn't yeah, that this happened. doesn't show any footage but uh it shows like a, a still that is blurred out <laughs> of, of a being uh, I think I think the blurred out is of the family. I think the cops are talking to the family, but it's just yeah, it's weird. And when you but it's definitely legitimate that cops went to investigate something. And there is a, a picture of of something low in the sky um, is also on that. I mean, the, the only reason I bring that up is because mm -hmm. if we are, we might be on a timeline for disclosure that literally will start involving aliens walking around on this planet so it's like mm -hmm. uh that may so i'm just like trying to keep my eyes open to what is actually happening have um, an incident see test the waters see how people react to it i mean it's yeah. it's kind of classic change management <laughs> That's oh, yeah. like exactly what you do in the business psychology of change management is you introduce something slowly and see how everyone reacts to it and, you know, start adapting and adjusting your approach based on that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny if they are actually trying to make disclosure happen, they might be realizing uh, people don't listen to anything they don't believe anything you can share any news story anything you want no basically no one will really care except a very small number of humans will be paying attention and be like what yeah it's only going to come out if uh if you know biden makes a statement or you know what i mean or the un makes a statement is the only way that people are going to really believe it i think yeah well 
I, absolutely. But although I do want to say I realize something, Biden is not the only person that could make the whole world, you know. Who believe. who do you think it would take to make the whole world well, sit think, up and take notice? I just want to, you know, I mean, they won't do it because they would consider it rude. But any former U.S. president or mm. vice president could stand up tomorrow and say, hey, you know, it's about time you all know the truth. I'm just going to tell you the truth. And then I'm going to go back to my golf course and sit there <laughs> for the next three months. But Obama could be like, hey, I've been wanting to tell you this. Aliens are real. Joe, go get them or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how it would go down, too. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I think would happen next? I think Biden should go up there and give the greatest speech of his life. And at the end of it, say, I am too old for this. Kamala, <laughs> take the reins of the United States. Be our president. I'm going to resign. You be president. It's, it's you coming it. soon enough. It, the, <laughs> getting a new president is going to come soon enough, I think. I, oh, I can't wait that this entire presidential season is going to be about aliens. There's no way that this does not become a regular topic and in its perfect timing. And it's mm -hmm. actually really good for the United States that it should be. We should be electing the next president and, and every member of Congress based upon how they say they would approach this situation. If, for example, aliens are real, that alone, just answer that question. They're real and say they're here. They should also answer the question, what if they're real, they're here, and the U.S. government has been secretly hiding them, and people in the industrial military complex have been hiding them? They should also answer that question. And, I'm, uh, I'm more afraid they're going to say we've been torturing them, right? they like, been torturing the aliens? Yeah, that's my concern, is that we have not been treating them nicely, right? That's given our history of what we do with uh, people that we capture, <laughs> Yeah. Guantanamo Bay, Abu Ghraib, you know, uh, I have concerns that uh, that they have been treated okay, right? Uh, I don't have that concern at all because I, I don't believe we've captured any aliens. The aliens <laughs> are more advanced than us. If We've been captured by them, but, you know, it's like, you know, there were a few European landers in the Americas that got tortured and hurt by the indigenous people, but really the advantage was on the side with the gunpowder and i i just seriously i mean we may have captured alien uh maybe robots like the the small mm -hmm. grays who are really just avatars so i could see us having in our possession maybe some alien androids like that that we've dissected but i don't think they were feeling pain uh i it a lot and if you listen to a lot of the abduction stories uh, when they involve the greys it's they don't seem like the greys never seem afraid mm. or they seem like like they're not worried they, they don't care if they get captured they're not very strong <laughs> i've heard of story this crazy story in russia where they, they they you know one crashed with like three of the beings they were alive and they kept them in a cell for like two weeks and then they just disappeared like kind of like this <laughs> crazy old story for they literally disappeared from inside of a cell and they never asked for food or water. They just sat there. And so, and that might, you know, it might be true. I mean, they might not have disappeared. Maybe the, you know, the KGB took them to a secret, the equivalent of the secret, you know, KGB labs over there. Mm -hmm. But they yeah. had teleported out. <laughs> I don't think the aliens are going to be like, how dare you kidnap our super advanced beings and torture them? Because they're going to be like, we could, they, we can't kidnap them. They're too, they're too, way more. I mean, that would be silly. That would be as silly as us shooting a missile at one of their flying saucers. Well, space is big. They may not have backup real close either. You know, there is that oh. concern, right? Yeah. Okay, well, there is that story. I've heard the story of alien refugees. There's some hmm. crazy tales of uh, tall whites who, th there's an interview floating around on YouTube from a guy who said he worked in this remote location in the desert in the US and there was a basically a refugee settlement being hidden by the US of I believe tall white aliens and they were uh and he had all these different stories he had seen them a few times they had come by his place he had this interaction with the females 
and he's like and he was scared of them he said when he met the um he was like when you meet a a female of this alien species you want to immediately say we know you love your children very much we know we <laughs> love your children more than anything that's how you put them at ease you have to put them at ease so they don't feel you're going to threaten their children which Oof. is a weird another goes back to that weird reproduction you know biological thread that seems to go through all of this it seems to be all about bloodlines and your species survival or the genealogical lines you care about and parents and that would make sense that you know they would build a culture where the parents the most important thing is protect your children that's what they would have every being in their culture besides obeying the great mm -hmm. leaders who i'm sure they have to do also you know protect your children obey us kind of similar to what we have in the u.s for what we say mm -hmm. your life is besides get a job raise your children obey the government yeah um i think that just a side note i think we should always do the twitter spaces um and then people can come talk to us yeah right Oh yeah, but it's the, an easy way for people to pop in and talk to us. Um, absolutely. Although you've yeah. noticed, no one has popped in. We are, yeah, we well, are four we'll days have to... disclosure and UFOs, aliens, uh, UFO Twitter. Not a, not a single human being has come in. Do you know how many Twitter spaces are up right now on crypto and business? Yeah, we. But we should schedule it so people can add it to their reminders and stuff. Yeah, I mean, this uh, is also not the right time of day yeah. or like a, for an interactive show. like there i've learned that the prime prime time you know is after like four o'clock you know mm. four to eight is the um sort of the prime window where people are really doing this kind of a lot of people are at work right now i still well, think it's, and we'd get europeans right now right this is the european well, right? and why don't we have europeans in here i mean yeah this is the greatest topic in the history I, it's it's weird i, I think it's because anyways it doesn't matter we're talking about it. <laughs> it's great. I, I'm so, uh, I'm just so excited. I mean, we just have a few days now till Sunday. I am just dying to see that full interview on Sunday of what yeah. David Grush has to say fully instead of just little odd clips, right? Seeing in context what the deal is, right? Um, yeah. And, and also like what, what the next steps are like he he's supposed to be you know filing complaints i'm not sure if it's actually a legal lawsuit or if it's just a complaint um but you know very curious to see uh what's going to happen from there i did see some congressmen being interviewed uh saying you know we don't know much about this we're looking into this kind of answers right yeah, um, but low-level flunky congressmen, not the right. big ones, not the senators, and the so. But that can't go on for long. They just got to be all in a back room. Like, could someone please give me some talking points? I <laughs> all need talk. What the heck do you want us to say? Uh, alien. Yeah. One guy, one guy said it was like uh, giving a speech, and then he got questions afterward, and he's like, "That was not on my practice card." <laughs> Yep. Yep. I don't even know what to say about that. Well, that wasn't on my bingo card, I think is what he said. It was not my bingo card. I don't know what to say about that. Wait, really maybe this is all building up to the the really big interpretation question. Cause I we've heard rumors that the Air Force, the way they've maintained their secrecy on this is they are super, super religious, Christian, mm. extreme, right wing religious and they they just tell all the people in the air force these are demons and oh. that is how they control that they, they, like this is this is that's to do with demons and god and angels and we the air force are on the side of god and we are protecting this nation we have a holy mission it's more important than you know the president or congress because we are the soldiers protecting you know christianity and I mean, I think so there there might be that a whole bunch of people in Congress have one ear being told by their some part of this mm -hmm. uh, Christian ideology of like when aliens are revealed to be real, make sure you put it in this context. This is how they fit wow. in our whole religious worldview. 
And then there, there, part, there could be each major religion is doing that, like get ready, explain this through our worldview. I mean, Islam is set up for this moment with the jinn because the, they, mm -hmm. they believe in a, in, I mean, their scriptures and their belief system has an alien species basically living on earth with us called the jinn, which have extraordinary powers that could be just super high technology. But, you know, Christianity is also set up with the Bible is filled with gods and demons, all mm -hmm. of which could be aliens. I mean, every every religion that has divine, you know, beings of different sorts is set up to possibly say they got it right. And then you got the people that are not religious trying to figure out, OK, well, how do we put this in a framework that is not religious, that involves science and somehow justifies? Well, I guess the big thing is what next? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I tried to search that real quick. Um, it looks like Nick Pope said, said that he was aware of a faction within the U S intelligent community that was pushing a narrative that UFOs were demonic. Um, it doesn't surprise me if that's true. I mean, like I initially I was surprised, but when I think about how much the far right Christian, um, groups have really been trying to infiltrate government and um, get into positions of power, especially over the last five years. Yeah, I can totally see that, right? Because um, they had that, that group has really, I mean, they've been succeeding in Canada and they're really pushing hard in the U.S. Um, yeah, that's, that is an interesting spin yeah. for sure yeah i mean it, it's like i mean it's, it's the greatest um domino you know unraveling and rewriting of the human narrative that we could possibly imagine we are we are going to be given a piece of information that fundamentally changes every detail of human history and the history of this planet and the history of this universe and I, it's almost like it's going to cause a cognitive problem with every human on earth as they do this. It, mm -hmm. um, I mean, besides the fact of what the heck a human is, but it's, you know, just talk about human history. What has been going on behind the scenes if this is really the case? And it takes me back to the Lacerta transcript because mm -hmm. she provides a plausible framework for this entire situation. I And if you just read it, assuming good chance she's lying for the benefit of her species in some ways mm -hmm. and you can sort of start to see a better picture than even that she paints um you know and if you want i could just like i have a summary of uh, the timeline of earth's history according to lacerta if you want me to like uh i would uh, love to hear that actually i i would really like to hear that that would be interesting all right so uh, i had chat gpt um analyze the whole transcript and i said based on your information mm -hmm. give me a timeline of the history of earth maybe i'll share this because then we could show it on the screen too um a certain file shared by are you seeing this mm -hmm. so here's a timeline on earth chat gpt says 65 million years ago a global war occurred between two alien species uh, humanoids from Procyon and the advanced reptilian species. The war was primarily for the raw materials of Earth, especially copper. The reptilians detonated a fusion bomb in middle America, causing a nuclear winter and the extinction of most life forms, including dinosaurs. A small but advanced species of dinosaurs survived this cataclysm. Okay, this so that is when a meteor was supposed to hit the Earth in yeah. Middle America. So they're yep. saying that it was a fusion bomb, not a meteor. Yep. Okay. And if, and, if, and she'll actually say in here there is, I think, iridium that was in the bomb. And if you mm. search, you will see iridium is in the layer of the meteor strike. And so she's saying the evidence is sitting right there ah. that it was not a meteor strike. Uh, I, I checked into that one. Yeah. But then, okay. Sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. <laughs> Anyways, so then she says, but so this is important. She's saying these are alien species that fought before her species or humans existed. She's mm -hmm. saying this is like before any of that. Then she says, 60 million years ago, Earth was left alone. 
and life started to evolve slowly, and the small advanced dinosaurs evolved over 40 million years, and their evolution was completed 10 million years ago. Mm -hmm. So basically, she's saying 10 million years ago, her species finally evolved enough intelligence to start to uh, do high, you know, technology and stuff 10 million years ago. And so they were on Earth and enjoying Earth. But also, it's important to know that Earth was much hotter back then. Reptiles mm. like a hotter Earth surface. So 10 million years ago, the Earth was nice and hot. They loved it. Okay. So now 1.5 million years ago, she says another alien species she refers to as the Elohim, which I believe is a biblical term. Uh, yeah, the Elohim. Yeah. yeah. Uh, arrived on Earth, they were interested in the unadvanced ape humanoids and decided to help them evolve faster, intending to use them as a slave race in future wars. This led to a war between the Elohim and the advanced reptilian species, oh. the sort of ancestors. So, yeah, so they, and this is, this matches with some other theories that these Anunnaki came from another uh, star system and they developed the ape uh, unadvanced ape humanoids into humans not to do wars but to mine the earth for gold right that's um, the sumerian myth yeah yeah so then uh 700 000 years ago the first advanced human civilization created by the elogium existed on earth and it lived at the same time with less developed pre-humans mm -hmm. and then 75 000 years ago the fifth human civilization built the large triangular constructions known as today's pyramids. So she's saying 75,000 years ago is when ancient Egypt and uh, that civilization started. And then 16,000 years ago, the sixth human civilization built cities, the ruins of which can be found today beneath the sea in the so-called Bimini area. 8,500 years ago, the seventh and current human civilization was created. So she's saying we're the seventh. Mm -hmm. um, this is the only creation that current humans can remember and to which our religions, religious writings refer to. So she says mm -hmm. everything, every myth only goes back about 8,000 years of human uh, history. So uh, that's really interesting. But it doesn't mean we don't have myths and stories that go back beyond mm -hmm. um, to these deeper parts. And then she says 5,000 years ago, the last battles between the advanced reptilian species and the elogium were fought. The aliens used powerful sonic weapons to destroy the reptilians' underground cities, but the reptilians were also able to destroy many of the aliens' surface installations and bases in space. So that's, so it says, um, I think she's saying that the Elogium left after that 5,000 years ago. So this sort of matches mm -hmm. up with this theory that every three to 5,000 years, a alien species visits Earth, and one theory is because this is not part of the Lacerda trend, but one theory is because their planet gets closer to us. Maybe it's Nibiru gets close enough every 5,000 years that there's a lot of interaction. Um, okay, but let's see. So uh, I'm surprised about the Egyptian thing. Uh, the Egyptians, I don't believe, are more than 5,000 years old. Well, there's there is some debate or, over the Sphinx. Uh, the, the age of the sphinx because right. of its weathering and there's that mm -hmm. they, they're lying about the the actual the age. age of the pyramids mm -hmm. um and, and, okay. and also uh the whole um when atlantis was supposed to fall was about twelve thousand years ago yeah uh, i'd be interested to see like what you know that's not mentioned at all in the lacerda um um, no, it is. I think uh, it didn't. It, just this little analysis, I don't mm -hmm. think captured it. But I, covered I, it. Okay. When I read it, I thought Lacerta was implying that Atlantis was actually a reptilian city, mm -hmm. and that if humans were there, they were there perhaps as slaves. Or maybe mm -hmm. I just put that together because that that maybe that's my theory from her transcript. But another really important point that this little uh, bit didn't show. Is she says after the uh, fusion bomb, or no? When no, no. She says that the Earth at some point the Earth started to get too cold. We're in an ice age right now, and mm -hmm. um, part of it was the fusion bomb nuclear winter that taught them to go underground and to mm -hmm. start to really build cities underground. And uh, so uh, she claims that uh, you know they preferred the Earth warmer. They're really underground because they need you know parts of the Earth that are hotter. Um, but it creates an, in, if it's true that her entire species can't really be comfortable on the surface of the earth because it's too cold, 
that would make a weird connection between they might have an interest in global warming. Mm -hmm. They might want the earth to get warmer. So it is possible they've been helping or hindering efforts to stop global warming because they may literally be like trying to heat up the oven to a comfortable temperature where they can come out and comfortably walk all over earth. Not even necessarily to like invade us, but just to share the surface maybe. Anyways, that's another one of my, my theories. Yeah, that would be a swap force the humans underground. <laughs> Yeah. Humans have to go underground because the surface is too hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a very yeah. interesting summary, right? Yeah. I'm, I've done a lot of, um, anyways, I, I, I like a deep dive into that because there's a chance that there's some truth in it. But yeah. Then, but then there's, there's other people that have some big theories like that. But anyways. So what is the date of the Lacerta transcripts? When did she do that? When did she... All right, I was not mentally prepared <laughs> for these questions. <laughs> I think it was in the, uh, I guess we actually could ask ChatGPT. I've asked it before. The reason I wonder is because that um, Middle America uh, meteor thing is more recent, right? Um, I'd have to look it, look up when the that one was I just put together. Um, <laughs> So it says between 99 and 2000. Yeah. yeah. That's when they got online. So I, that's what I, th I thought somewhere in there. I thought the transcript actually had a date in it. Let me see. Masking uh, being when the dinosaur killing meteor in middle America was discovered. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, well, it was discovered in the 70s. Okay. So that would have been possible for her to be known. It, yeah. Sure. It wasn't taught in my curriculum, though. I mean, it was taught that there was probably a meteor, but they didn't know where it had hit. Um, oh, 1990 is when it actually got more broadly known interesting so there there would have been possible for her to know i i was just wondering if even it was possible for her to know that that was a theory <laughs> right <clears throat> i yeah. don't even know how to say it the the chick chick's love crater chick's oh, yeah. I, I always say chick's a lube i don't know if chick's a lube right. <laughs> i don't know uh, but yeah, uh, that is very interesting that she's bringing that up because at least that wasn't in Gen X uh, education. <laughs> right. That would yeah. have to be something more obscurely known at the time, right? Yeah. So yeah, I, I just like, I'm trying to like piece together what is a plausible history of the earth? Mm -hmm. If it's true, even if you just take the seed of if the if there's other alien species and they have an interest in elements on the earth, an ongoing interest in mining the earth for some reason, just when that. When will they be back? <laughs> That's... Well, 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 the thing about Lacerta is she says they've been here the whole time. She says they're yeah. inside the earth. They're in underground cities. Well, and the reptilians are, but the Elohim that, you know, wanted humans to be their slaves. That's. <laughs> yeah. That's my concern, right? Yeah. Well, I guess I, I, one thing that the Lacerta transcript, it, that timeline does for me is it solves the problem of the Drake equation and the problem of intelligent life evolving on multiple planets at the same time, because you don't have to have that premise anymore. It's until it's life evolved only one time on Earth mm -hmm. and 60 and, and 65 million years ago, <clears throat> it may have you've gotten advanced enough to leave Earth. So we might have we might have been the seed and then they might have come back a very different life and there was still life here and then there's you know conflict and disagreement. So it's all every intelligent species here might be related over the course of you know a billion years of history. So the the reptiles might be related to us if and they might be cohabitating on earth. There might be really advanced ones 
living in the moon or in a in a mothership going around the earth that we, they're just pretending that NASA is denying that you know they're they're hiding from us all this time mm -hmm. for, for that I mean I guess that's another massive question is aliens don't live in you know bus size flying saucers you don't a species doesn't live in a flying saucer they have to have a home right. and they're flying around the earth they have to be able to get to their home where they have food and comfort and restaurants and factories and so if they're flying around the earth if they're home it's either the earth is their home and they have bases here or they have motherships and those motherships have to be somewhere and mm -hmm. it makes me want to do a deep dive into um, every sighting of motherships because there are there are a number of sightings of very big ships. And actually, that's mm -hmm. something Roosh actually mentioned some football, uh, you know, football field size ships. And that was a clip I found. That's a new one. That's a mm -hmm. very different thing to say. It's one thing to say there's little drones flying around our ship. It's another thing to say there's a few motherships because those have. Yeah, I hadn't heard that one. Yeah, they may have to be somewhere. It may Although, be as, as they're in our ocean. The NASA UFO task force said if there was, we would not be able to detect them yet. That we need to get better technology that uh, we are very, you know, we struggle to recognize and detect in Muamua, right? Um, right, but that was pretty far from us. That We yeah. might literally have a, you know, there, I mean, there's no reason there, if you go back to the uh, Tic Tac UFO and mm -hmm. all these sightings on the water, they're going, the Tic Tac story is about these UFOs going from like 85,000 feet down to like the surface of water repeatedly. There's, there's a couple reasons why you would do that. Mm -hmm. it, you're transporting something either up or down and it's either living or dead. And, and they saw something under the water. They saw a giant white disturbance on the water that made them in several interviews say they thought a ship or something was under the water and if that's true it, it could be as simple as they're they're in the oceans they're, they could just park a hundred motherships in the oceans or they have underground cities or bases um and you would think if they've been hiding for this long you know how scared they would have to be of everyone on earth knowing where their home is on earth how they would just be like really not interested in the possible results of you know because they're humans are a very violent species you got plenty of people there are going to be yeah. a lot of people jumping at the let's just hate aliens bandwagon and they threaten us and or at least let's go knock on their door and see their house well it does seem really odd that uh, nasa was very adamant that they were only going to look at aerial phenomena that they were completely <laughs> not going to you know because like only, what is it, 5% of the oceans have been explored, right? Like we we haven't even explored our own oceans. <laughs> yeah. So that, well, that, that, you know, from a scientist point of view, I was like, whoo, that's really excluding a lot of what we haven't explored yet, right? Yeah, <laughs> it was, I mean, also, can you imagine the president calls up a science department and says, could you please study you know, everything we see flying in our skies and you're like, oh yeah, we'll do that. And then the president calls up and says, oh, can you add the oceans to that? And they're like, uh, no, I don't have time for that. Can you call somebody else? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm just a researcher and I, I know you're the president and you've asked me, but you already asked me to look at the skies and I don't accept change requests from the president when you ask me to study more things because that might result in maybe more millions of dollars being going to my lab to fund me if I actually say did what you were asking me to do for the safety of humanity and the security and future of you know our country. Not nah, we're just gonna look in the skies. So sorry, we don't have time. We just don't have time. We'd have to change the documents. <laughs> We'd have to rewrite this. Look at the mission statement. We said we were gonna look up. We only look, You? how can we, there's no way we could change this mission statement to say we also look at the water. Well. It's the name of NASA, right? National Aeronautics and Space Administration, right? They're, they're caught up in their own name, I think. Um, 
but you know, despite that, they did talk about wanting to collaborate with marine biologists, which I was like, wait a minute, wait, wait, you just said, <laughs> right? Well, but they wanted to bring marine biologists onto the team. So, yeah. So a little, a little dissonance there in their message, right? Was yeah. It, right? it, I think, um, I mean, there's no way for this thing. One of the things that's been going around on the news channels and when they talk about this and when they interview people, and a congressman and everything, it's it's the people are like, do you know how many institutions would have to be lying and in on this to have hidden this so well? And the disappointment that the that the people are going to have when they find out NASA helped hide this, that NASA, there had to be NASA scientists and Frankly, there has to be members in the astronomy community that are have been going along with this cover up. There's it, and that is really mm -hmm. sinister. The scientific community helping to hide uh, knowledge of of this level, and probably then also hiding from the world technology, hiding scientific theories. Um, I mean, I think one of another one of my theories is that sort of matches with some stories is that there is a way to get zero point energy, basically infinite mm. energy. And if you think about it, once a technological society discovered the ability to create like, you know, an infinite energy battery, mm -hmm. you would stop all use of fossil fuels. You would stop, like you would just use infinite energy. And yeah, it, oil companies would not like that, would they? <laughs> right. And it, and if you were interested in a planet warming up from fossil fuel burning, you mm -hmm. would want to give that technology to the planet until you got it to your right temperature. And it also, you know. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I kind of lost where I was going with that. <laughs> Well, it's just one of those possibilities that there there could be some collusion there. Um, but, you know, as we saw with Nazi Germany, it doesn't take much for people to toe the line if they feel that they're being patriotic or, you know, religious reasons, right? Yeah. yeah. It, it really doesn't take, take mm -hmm. that much for people to feel, if they feel any kind of external source saying you're doing the right thing, right? Um, so it doesn't even have to be that coercive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just sad. It's just sad if uh, people are, are lying and hiding technology, hiding advancement. I mean, there's like stories of Tesla discovering infinite energy, zero point energy sources, and him strangely going silent about it. Like maybe he got like... Um, <laughs> He got in onto the inside and they said, we don't want to release this technology. I don't know. Well, it is one of those things kind of like uh, studying herbal medicine or, uh, you know, doing studies on generic drugs. What profit is there in that? Right. Yeah. Uh, profit is a huge driver of, you know, <clears throat> so because Elon Musk is driven by profit you know, it, it's hard. You know, he tries to be very, I'm altruistic. I'm buying Twitter for the good of humanity. Right. Like, uh, but then all of a sudden he's wanting to monetize Twitter more. Right. The, the blue check Mark for eight bucks. If everybody yeah. buys it, that's a lot of money versus, you know, just handing it out to the celebrities. Yeah. Right? Well, <laughs> I, I don't have a, uh, so he immediately monetized, right? So for someone who's altruistic, hmm, right? I'm afraid if I start talking, I'm going to come off like an Elon Musk fanboy. <laughs> but, you <laughs> know, he has enough money where he could, you know, just, yeah, he doesn't I, need the money. I mean, I, that is a talking about Twitter and Elon Musk. I, you're going to, I'm going to go on like a huge tangent of discussion here. Uh, so, but, you know, we could just stick it to uh, aliens and UFOs. I mean, <laughs> this, if, if, I mean, if this is true, well, I want to go back to the magnetism anti-gravity thing. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, it's fascinating that the Lacerda transcript 
says that the craft used magnetism to navigate, because that sort of goes along with this theory the angry astronaut was saying yesterday, that these things use magnetism to fly. And it's really an important point. Are they using magnetism or are they using anti-gravity? Magnetism sounds like a technology that is nifty. Anti-gravity sounds to me like a technology that could blow up the moon. Like, And so those are very, and it might be maybe as far back as the La Certa transcript, this lie about how these craft fly has been start like literally that was one of her purposes may have been make them believe it's magnetism and they might believe they be, can make humanity believe these things use magnetism to fly for a period of time to prevent us from really figuring out anti-gravity mm. and because i think anti-gravity if you go all the way back to Bob Lazar, I mean, maybe that's what Lacerda's purpose was, is we got to stop, we got to deflect them away from what Bob Lazar said about anti-gravity and element 115. Mm -hmm. Because if element 115 is real, it is the most valuable substance on earth. And it's more, it's way more likely that is the substance they're here to mine. And they don't want to share any of it with humanity. You know, gold and copper, those are everywhere in the universe. They're not, there's no way they come to a planet for gold and copper and and deal with hiding here for that. But if this planet had a deposit of element 115, say from a strange maybe impact between a small planet and Earth in its early days, we could have a really, and maybe that deposit is sitting somewhere, maybe it's inside the Earth and there's a mine. And and that's the that's what this is all about. This is all economics, aliens and humans sharing the profits from something on earth that we just know when everyone doesn't know about. We don't even know we want a piece of it. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, I just, and so, but so this loops back to Elon Musk. It's if you are building rockets right now, if you're like investing billions into rockets to get into space at some point, Elon Musk, if he truly is as, as out of the loop as he claims to be about the truth of aliens, and I think he is. I think he literally, uh, yeah, I don't think he knows. Mm -hmm. Or he's a big liar. But if he really doesn't know, he's got to be sitting there. And if, if you say anti-gravity is possible using this element 115, and the U.S., say, has 20 anti-gravity ships, maybe even some, like, big, you know, like, really big, he's going to be like, why am I building a flipping rocket? Somebody give me a kilogram of element 115. <laughs> you know what Elon Musk can do with that? You know mm -hmm. what? He will figure out, he will figure out a hundred applications for that in the first like six hours of his brain realizing element 115, as Bob Lazar describes, actually exists. And humanity, I mean, he's gonna throw out Starship and he's gonna have us on the moon in like three years. Uh, building bases if you give him element 115 so anyways that's that's where i think about this elon and also he's like wasting money on starship and and mm -hmm. chemical rockets which are really unsafe it's, he's just like showing off really demonstrating how much you can do with a chemical rocket even though they're obsolete and he he is a bit of a show showman right like he does like the showmanship of it look at the the tesla in space right um but yeah, it, it is curious that he hasn't poured research into, you know, element 115. I just don't think he believes it. I mean, yeah. but if, uh, and it, you know, you can kind of just, if you watch his interviews, you can see his brain, it, he was on Joe Rogan and Joe mm -hmm. Rogan before the, the 2017 revelation of the Tic Tac videos, uh, you know, that had been on the internet for a few years. Mm -hmm. And but Elon had not seen him. He claims he had never even looked at him or listened to the David Fravor story. And it, it's it blows my mind that he still, even after the 60 minutes interview, that he still seems to have not listened to David Fravor and the Tic Tac story enough for his brain to accept this is worth reevaluating his understanding of physics. But I think that day will happen. I cannot wait for the day. It's kind of like the day Elon realized Bitcoin and cryptocurrency were actually a, a brilliant technology. It, it, you know, he just one day woke up and like, oh, this actually is important and cool. And then he's been, you know, 
he's been re and then you could just tell it was like really a 24 hour period it looks like elon has researched this enough that his brain has shifted <laughs> and we could, everyone on earth got to enjoy that show same thing will happen with this uh alien story at some point and i think he'll be angry just like you and i i think he's gonna people when people like elon stand up and they are angry and they're like how dare you hide this technology from us do you know how hard we're working to try to improve technology on earth for the betterment of humanity and you're sitting there I mean, it'd be funny for Elon to be like sitting there in your mansions, enjoying this, <laughs> you know, technology. But Elon doesn't have mansions; he lives in like no. a trailer. Right? Yeah, or on or on friends' couches, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. The oddity there is so so interesting. Um, but yeah, you you would think that if anybody wanted to to see what is behind this it would be Elon because so much of his life is invested in SpaceX right now, right? Yeah, right. very good. Well, what should we... Curious. Well, I, mean, I think we should probably wrap up here pretty soon. We're yeah. um, at an hour, almost hour and a half, hour and 20. Um, did you have any other big topics to cover for today? No, I uh, just, uh, you know, as... As I get more thoughts of how this fits together, I'm going to put them into the Hive One. Mm -hmm. And uh, if anyone wants to join their brain in there, and if you have some better ideas or good ideas you want to throw out there, feel free to come in and uh, join a conversation. Hive One is a little bit challenging to navigate, but there's, you know, I'll uh, put some links to some pages that are at least fun to uh, start with. Yeah, that would be great to put your put a starter page into uh, our podcast description that would be perfect yeah. Yeah. Um, and when are we going to do this again oh wow i mean i mean i think things I, why don't we i think we do can i do it tuesday it. yeah let's do well we might have to do monday we might have to do sunday night after that no <laughs> <laughs> uh what about um i mean okay we can wait till tuesday i might be bursting at the seams but uh you know yeah what do you think we want to do monday or tuesday uh, let me take a look at monday um monday should be fine monday or tuesday whatever works better for let's you let's do monday the day after we both get okay. to watch the thing and uh it can be a, we can do short shows we should probably at the beginning of the show agree like how long are we going to go today and mm -hmm. then and uh but anyways the way that things are okay. just like it's good i think just to debrief and rant and uh just let it out there we just need people to start thinking and figuring out what do we do now what do we do now that we you know aliens are real and what i mean for me it's still just like trying to process and figure out what is going on why is this yeah. happening who is doing what who wants what who, and how is this all playing out that's, that's it we just have to figure all that out together okay so we will record again on monday um so i'm going to go ahead and wrap us up for today our call to action today is to follow meditation matt on twitter for an eclectic mix of philosophy art activism and ufology also be sure you hit the uh David Grush interview on News Nation on uh, Sunday. <laughs> Everybody watch that. Um, thank you for taking the time to be part of our Beyond Humanity podcast today. And join us on Monday. Don't be afraid of the truth. I'm only drunk. Won't stitch with their hiding. Will it stay with the private sector? Turn into the afternoon Feel the truth that is slipping away Don't believe it's coming back soon The secret's not in Congress Or elected ones we trust In private hands it's well
All right, we don't have to play the whole show here, I'll, but I'll put the whole audio into the, uh, you know. Into oh, that's the... great. I'm starting to really love that song. <laughs> that is great. Okay, so are we, uh, I'm. Yeah, let's stop recording and I'll, I'll even end the Twitter space. Thank you everyone on Twitter for joining us. I see, you know, you're, I mean, <laughs> not a single person jumped in. The secret's not in Congress. Or elected once we trust In private hands it dwells Do you know what it does?